Hey, everybody. Welcome back, uh, as always. Welcome back to the uh, the CMDB ITOM chat. As usual, I'm your, your host here, Scott Trumbull. And uh, we'll jump right into today's topic because I'm, I'm kicking off our next series of topics. And we're going to be talking about uh, CSDM. So today I just wanted to kick off and take a few minutes talking about two, two areas that I've gotten feedback from customers or when I've worked on projects with customers, you know, on implementing CSDM and starting to, to go down that path. Um, they're very overwhelmed with with where to start. They've started to look at some literature or they've maybe read the white papers which show the whole thing as in a whole, um, what it's all about, but but how do you get past that that step of, of getting started with it? And I know people get really, really wound around the fact and really scared when they start seeing that common services data model when they see that, vision of that. And let's take a look at what that looks like really quick. So this is a time I know most everybody out there at some point in time has, has seen this, right? And when you get your first look, this is kind of the V4, when you get this first look of how all these pieces move together and you maybe haven't been using it all at a time or not, it's, it can be a little bit terrifying, right? There's a lot going on here. We're not going to break all this down today in this topic, but I did want to mention that there's, you know, there is an approach. So before you, when you read that white paper and, and see this, it's, it's overwhelming, but there is a prescribed approach to get there. This isn't something that, that has to be done boiling the ocean. You don't have to, to drive to all the pieces. If you remember, just like uh, in one of the previous sessions, it might have just been last week when Justin was on and he showed that, that cool new CMDB Foundations dashboard that had that, that model, that driving model of it, it was broken down into several steps of, of, you know, crawl, walk, run. And, and those steps can be divided into, into two different ways of looking at it. And, and ServiceNow has built two prescriptive approaches to, to getting there. And one is, you know, that, that we look at right here, right now, there, there's a, a service approach, which is kind of, of driven based on, on giving getting your services defined. So things that are coming from maybe your your SPM group or kind of driving back where where it's it's focused on uh, on the services to we're getting tied to the end or kind of an applications focus approach. Now in my experience, I find that a lot of people that have already done say their their um, horizontal discovery and kind of found their application servers and are ready to build those those application services that this is this is the more common approach that I'm running into customers doing out there in the environment that I've worked with, but both are valid models. It really, it really kind of depends on whether you're coming from it from kind of a, uh, a project or a, an application planning view, a, a business model planning view that's high level services, or whether you're coming from an operational view. And in my case, I've worked with a lot more people that come from it with an, from an application, from a operational view. Um, I know we have some other folks on, on the group here. I, I don't know if, if you guys have any different experience than that. Yeah, Scott, some of the, the customers that I've worked with uh, have been most successful uh, in taking incremental approaches and sort of thinking big, starting small, uh, and taking an approach and doing the, the, the crawl, walk, run uh, method there. And maybe they start off with one component, maybe it was services, uh, and start working their way across. Yeah, Larry, I, com I, I completely agree. And, and, and you don't have to make that approach up. up. 
you don't have to make up that component approach or try to figure that out on your own. You know, ServiceNow has really put together a, a program to help do that. They've provided, which Dustin showed the other day, kind of some dashboarding to help lead us through that. And they've really come up with, with two strategic, successful approaches. And whether that's kind of from the service base or, or that application focused base and how we drive through that. We, we get our foundations in place, what we want to accomplish in the crawl stage. Um, and it's really an organization. We have some guidelines to help figure that out. Now, you may have seen a slightly different version in this. This is, I like this, I like this, but ServiceNow has kind of put out a, a, a newer version of this. Same approach, same things. They've just moved away from the, they've moved the, the verbiage from the crawl, walk, fly to, to a maturity model approach, low, medium, high. So it's, it's really the same thing, whichever slide deck you've seen or whoever you might be working with or or what presentation you've seen, there's just the only real difference in that is the call out, whether that's maturity model or not, it's the same. But like I say, I've worked a lot with the application focus and because I come into it a lot from the operational space that people are working with kind of discovery. And I've seen this, this, this application focus be very successful where you've already done dis your horizontal discovery. You know, you already have those things over there to tie it into your application services. So let's talk about, that's the other thing I really wanted to talk about today. The other topic under the CSDM is app, the application services. So that was the other thing I really wanted to talk about today and the other real topic I wanted to cover because I've had this conversation with so many people and that's the application services. And this is one of my favorite slides my favorite things to show and it's there's not a lot of pictures there's no flaming logos there's no moving but there's so much useful information on this that i find and that's that whole conversation about what is an application what is an application service what's a business application what are those things there's so much confusion around that detail so we're going to talk just a little bit about that today and then we'll we'll have some topics if you want to get together with us to, to talk about it some more we can we could certainly arrange that but that big thing you know that application is is a very commonly used term but when we're talking about cmdb or the csdm application has a very specific meaning, right? And that is that deployed program, that, that module, a group of programs, that thing deployed onto a server and it's stored in that CMDB CI Apple table. So when we say application, that's what we mean. We mean that thing, that, that database instance that is deployed on there, that running Oracle, that Java WebSphere, that Tomcat, that IIS server that's deployed out there, that's installed in your environment. When ServiceNow, when we're talking about the CSDM and building models, that's what we're talking about as an application. It's, and it's usually discovered, right? It's that discoverable deployed item versus uh, that business application, which which represents all of our, our infrastructure environments, right? All of the things that provide a, a functionality. So that's that's that that business application is more stuff that's used by our, our our planning groups and those type of things, right? Those aren't necessarily operational CIs. They're not used in our incident problem change. They're, they're used for our planning and they, they contain a lot of that metadata around applications. How do they tie together? How do people do it? What business services do they, business uh, services leverage it, that type of thing. And then the third one, which this is what I, you know, where the rubber meets the road and we tie those things together and is that application service. And that's really when we talk about business service mapping, when we talk about, you know, the CSDM, this is where things really 
really show up and where we see those maps and things on the page. And that's that, that is logical representation of a deployed stack of things that, that provides that, right? And it's usually the things that are used to drive our map. It's, it's contained in that CI service auto table. And when we talk about that, I know coming up in, a, in a, I think next week or in a future week, Justin's gonna be on here showing how to use the new, um, the new service creator app and the application services are what that's creating. That's that kind of deployed stack of things. So my my production SAP deployment, all the things that go into that, my, my dev, um, whatever the case may be. And application services are a big part of, of the CSDM and of business service mapping. And all right, so those business service those application services are those those deployed those deployed stacks of an application now now i brought up kind of an example of where it was deployed by sap production or sap dev and all the things that go underneath it but each organization and each service type could have different ways that that they determine to to break down their services and sometimes figuring that out and figuring out the one or two that best fit your organization can be a can be a it can be a little bit of a struggle too and and knowing that not one size fits all on this is a is a thing so whether i might be dividing my services up by by the tier level of support or if they're end user customers that do it, it might be by the by the services they provide but it's important to remember it is that deployed stack and if you're struggling with that with coming up with some of those things there's some good guidelines out there available and some nice flowcharts that help kind of asking some questions, walking through, how do we answer those? What are the characteristics? How do I answer that that help us determine, you know, what we might want to use for the service modeling or the service type for this organization or for your organization. So, uh, you know, I, I, I want to wrap up with what are some of our key takeaways for today. The the thing I wanted people to come away from from my my little bit of discussion today was that implementing CSDM is not does not have to be boiling the ocean. It does not have to be terrifying, and you don't have to go it alone and make it up as you go along. Right there is some good guidance out there. There is some good, there are some materials and there are some partners that can kind of help drive making the decisions, some decisions trees based on, on actual real, um, how are you using it? How does you fit, how does it fit your environment? You know, what do we need to do today? What do we want to do to tomorrow and, and working through? So it's that big thing of, you know, let's get that first level and let's show the value of it. And then when we show the value, we could keep working with our teams to move to the next thing. So we're going to keep talking about CSDM in our further sessions. Um, I know uh, we're going to talk about life cycle management, moving to uh, life cycle management. Larry Dial, I think, is going to be on talking about that. I could have that off. <laughs> And, and talking about moving from, from all those different, um, you know, install status, hardware status, asset status, moving to all those things to, to life cycle stages. So that's a great improvement on there. And then we're going to talk about, we looked at some of those services today and what the different types are. And we're going to talk about some of the new features that are available with that service builder to help us do that. And, and how do we find our endpoints? What do we do with all those things? So I appreciate everybody that hung in and listened through this topic today. If you have any questions, you know, reach out to us. We can help uh, fill in any blanks. Uh, if not, we'll see you next week uh, with the next topics. Next week, you know, same ITOM time, same ITOM channel.